What's up, world? I'm back at it. The one and only college football fanatic. We are four days away from week one. But we had week zero yesterday. And to tell you the truth, I was so excited just to see a little bit of college football. We saw Wyoming with a stingy defense against New Mexico with that win. We saw Hawaii, who had a lot to play for with a hurricane coming close to the island. Hawaii going to Colorado State and defeating them. And then you had a great game between Jacksonville State and North, North Carolina A&T, which was very close, a great game. And then Prairieville A&M almost with the upset over Rice. Rice had to, had to kick a game-winning field goal to beat Prairieville A&M. So we had some excitement yesterday in Week 0. Now I cannot wait until Thursday when week one officially begins. They call it the college kickoff week. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, mm -mm, Sunday, and Monday. So we got five days of college football for week one starting on Thursday. So if y'all saw... Um, my videos from last year, I know I talked about the big games during the week, and I talked about the local teams since I'm from Louisiana, the local college teams here in Louisiana. I also talk about them. I usually do them first, unless they're ranked, and I do them later on. But let's get started. Thursday night in New Orleans, Louisiana, Wake Forest against Tulane. Willie Fritz starts his third year as the coach of Tulane University. And he just got a contract extension up until 2023. They added two years to his contract. So Tulane must be happy with what they're seeing to give Willie Fritz a, a contract extension when his contract wasn't even over yet. So they must be happy. Um, tell you what, if I'm Tulane University, I'm very motivated to play, to play this year. Because if you saw the game last year against SMU, they got robbed. I'm saying it. They got robbed in that last play. That was a touchdown. You watch the video, that's a touchdown. I don't know what they saw in the um, in the replay booth upstairs to say that wasn't a touchdown. They robbed Tulane out of a bowl game. That's how I feel. Tulane should have been in the bowl because they won that game on a game-winning touchdown. But guess what? They start the season off against Wake Forest. And Tulane um, scoring. The amount of points they scored, the average, has increased every year under Willie Fritz. So I'm thinking this year, Tulane might score about 30 points. They were around 27, 28 last year. They might score around 30 points a game. They bring back nine stars on offense, five on defense. Okay? They have Wake Forest coming to town. Wake Forest bring back eight starters on offense. And I believe five on defense. But something is telling me, Tulane is going to win this game. I, I, I have a strong feeling that Tulane's going to win this game. You have Jonathan Banks at quarterback. This 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 system fits him. And this spread option they're going to run, I think it's going to give Wake Forest fits due to the experience that's coming back on offense. And I think Tulane wins this game. I think it'll be close in the second half. A great game in the second half. But I think Tulane gets this done. They beat a major conference foe. And then they're going to ride that momentum throughout the season. I'm not saying they're going to win the AAC. That's going to be Memphis, in my opinion. But I think Tulane will be in a bowl this year. I said it last year they would, and <laughs> the refs robbed me. But this year, Tulane in a bowl. They start off week one, 1-0, one defeating the Demon Deacons from Wake Forest. Um, Grambling at University of Louisiana Lafayette. I'm not going to say much about this. ULL should win this game and to win by a good margin. So I got ULL. Louisiana Tech at South Alabama. Um, Tech is bringing back a lot of experience. Nine starters on offense, eight on defense. And I, I really don't see this game being much of a problem for Louisiana Tech. I think with all the starters that's coming back and experience, this, this will get the job done for them to start off 1-0 when they go to Mobile, Alabama to play South Alabama. Now, on to the big games. The big games. Northwestern at Purdue. I tell you what, Jeff Brom 
did a great job with the Purdue Boilermakers last year in his first year there. He did a great job. Got into a bowl. He had them competing in every game. You know, had them in the game against Michigan up until late. So he did, he's done a great job. He's building a program. He wants to have a winning program there at Purdue. He's going up against Coach Fitzgerald at um, Northwestern. And, excuse me, excuse me, Coach Fitzpatrick at Northwestern. And who's a very, very good coach. You know, I don't understand how he doesn't get offers from other schools. If he has gotten offers from other schools, he wants to turn it down. He wants to be happy, happy where he's at with, at with Northwestern. Got Northwestern to 10 wins last year. Purdue is a 2.5 favorite just because they're at home. If this was the other way around, Northwestern would be a 5.5 favorite, to be honest with you. That's how they usually do it in regards to home field and all that good stuff. But in, in either way, uh, this is this is gonna be this is gonna be a fight, ladies and gentlemen. It's gonna be a fight between two teams, okay, who are very well disciplined. They're not the best talent that you see, not the best athletes, but the coaches get the best out of each and every one of their players. They're fundamentally sound. It's gonna be a tight ball game, but I got the Wildcats at Northwestern winning a very close game, to be honest with you, within three points. So, Purdue will not cover this spread. I got Northwestern winning this in big time. Oregon State at Ohio State University. Tell you what, there's a lot of things going on in Ohio State in regards to, you know, the Zach Smith domestic abuse situation and Urban Meyer also being involved in it. You know, uh, so it's never a good thing. When you're hiding things like that, you got to do the right thing. You got to do the right thing and report any type of domestic issues, domestic abuse, domestic uh, violence, whatever. But Ohio State, in my opinion, to me, probably will be undefeated until Urban Meyer comes back in week four. I, I'm saying they're going to be Oregon State. They'll be Rutgers. I'll be at that game. And they'll be TCU. All right, which TCU will be the toughest game to date. Okay, up until he comes back. Um, Oregon State, people talk bad about Oregon State as if they're like worse than Kansas, the worst team in college football and the Power Five. I won't get into all that myself. But they're not beating Ohio State. Too much talent on the other side of that field. Uh, it's, nah, Ohio State, favored by 37. Could they cover that spread? Yeah, would I take it? No, but it's, it's, it's just too much for Oregon State to handle. Ohio State wins that game 1-0. Texas goes to Maryland. Number 23, Texas. I tell you what, Tom Herman will write this ship eventually. I said it last year, and this is year two. We're about to see what's going to happen. I believe they will be they will be better than 6-6, six and six, which they were last year, and went to a bowl. Texas Looking for revenge. This was the first game last year, and Maryland came there, I believe, with their second or third string quarterback, and then he got hurt, and the fourth string, the third or fourth string came in the game, and they beat Texas. Texas coming back with a whole bunch of talent, and should be better running the um, the systems that Tom Herman has brought in, especially his offensive spread system. And I'm looking for a big year out of Texas, to be honest with you. I'm not picking them to win the Big 12. I'm picking Oklahoma to win the Big 12 again this year. But I'm giving Texas about 8-9 wins this year. 8-9 wins. And they're going to Maryland, which is in a, which is in a uproar itself with Coach DJ Durkin and the athletic trainers and the athletic staff for what has, been, what has come out about the misbehavior towards players, all that stuff. And I just don't see Maryland being up for this game. And I think Texas will go into Maryland and win big. They're going to win big. And Texas goes to Maryland, comes out 1-0. Longhorns, all the way. The Avocare kickoff classic in Houston, Texas. NRG Stadium. The Rebels of Ole Miss travel to Houston to take on the Texas Tech Red Raiders from Lubbock. So it's a neutral site, but more or less it's a home game for Texas Tech because they are from Texas. And tell you what, this is Cliff Kingsbury year to get this ship rolling or he will be out. And I believe if Cliff Kingsbury is out, 
Coach Sonny Dykes at SNU might be in line to take that job. That's my opinion. I could be wrong. Won't be the first time I've been wrong. Just saying. But I, I tell you what, Ole Miss is coming to this game with the to me one of the best receiving cores in all of college football, led by Mr. AJ Brown. This guy is phenomenal. I mean, if you have, if you never saw AJ Brown play, I suggest you turn on your TV. 11 o'clock Central Time, or wherever you are, get your time right, and watch this game. A.J. Brown is a monster, and whenever he decides to go pro, more than likely will be a first-round draft pick. Texas Tech, they don't have a strong defense. Never did under Cliff Kingsbury. And I believe that's the major fault in this game against Ole Miss. It's just too much talent at the receiving for that receiving core for Texas Tech to handle. Ole Miss to me will win this game by more than two touchdowns. At least two touchdowns or more. It's too much for Texas Tech to handle. Um I mean you want if you like offense, you got a good game here. Texas Tech spread, Ole Miss spread too. But Ole Miss too much for Texas Tech. Ole Miss wins this game. One and oh. The big game, Chick-fil-A. The Chick-fil-A kickoff classic in Atlanta, Georgia. I'll be at that game. Washington, sixth rank in the nation versus number nine, Auburn. You talk about a big test to see where you are early in the year. And, and I mean, we don't talk about college playoff for football this early. We make speculations. But this game here has a lot to do with the college football playoff um, rankings when they come out late October. This game right here, a top 10 matchup week one. Okay? To me, Auburn has to, will have the tougher schedule with SEC teams as in Alabama and Georgia. And I guess you could put LSU in there also. So that's going to be a tough matchup for um Tough schedule for Auburn. To me, it's tougher than what Washington has. Okay? To me, Washington only got Stanford. My opinion. This game here, I tell you what. I think the first quarter will be a big-time fight. And then after that, you're going to see the difference in talent between one team and the other. Okay? You got two great coaches. Chris Peterson, Gus Malzahn. Gus Malzahn. A wonderful offensive mind. Yes, he is. He is a great offensive mind. Chris Peterson, great coach. Get the best out of his players. Got trick plays for days, okay? And he has done a wonderful job at Ole Miss. And now look what he's doing at Washington. He's building a program, okay, guys? Washington has been to the college playoff in 2016. And then they were in the Cotton Bowl last year, okay? Two major bowls back-to-back -back for the Washington Huskies. Now, Washington got a good defense. They have one of the best secondaries, okay, according to the critics. Auburn has one of the best D-lines in the um, nation. But I think the difference is talent, and that goes to Auburn. And I think starting in that second quarter, you're going to see the difference. And I got Auburn probably win this game by 10 points. Auburn Tigers, War Eagle, or defeat Washington and hop up in the top 10 rankings. Tennessee versus number 17, West Virginia. Oh, uh, one of the best quarterbacks in the nation, Will Greer. One of the best receivers in the nation, David Sills. Ah, man, I, how much as I want to give Jeremy Pruitt a chance in this first matchup, I just cannot give him any chance in this matchup against West Virginia. Too much on the other side of the field for West Virginia. West Virginia wins big. Boise State, number 22 ranked. Boise State at Troy. Troy got that big win against LSU last year. I predicted it. I said it. I told you it would happen, and it happened. And I'm going to tell you here today that Troy will upset Boise State at home. It's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. Troy will get another big-time win against a big-time, big-time national name, Troy. The athletes on the field will be... Tremendous for Boise State. Yes, Boise State has played Alley before that Oregon. This one, Boise is picked to be to go undefeated from a lot of critics. I'm looking at this game saying they're going 0 and 1. 
I have Troy defeating Boise. Close game. Close. Trust me. Boise going to stay in the game. But Troy gets the win. Don't be surprised. Number 14, Michigan. At number 12, Notre Dame. So the big question was for Michigan. Is Shea Patterson the answer? It was named a couple days ago. Shea Patterson is a starting quarterback. Hmm. Okay. So is he the answer for Jeff? Excuse me, not Jeff. Jim Harbaugh. For Jim Harbaugh. Everybody said he hasn't had that type of quarterback that he had at Stanford with Andrew Luck. Or what he had at the 49ers with Colin Kaepernick. So they're saying this is the answer. Shea Patterson. Newsflash people. They're going to Notre Dame. Yes. They're going to where Jesus is overlooking the football stadium. Yes. Notre Dame, in my opinion, will have a great team. I don't have it going to the playoffs. I think they'll be in the one of the major six bowl games. But Notre Dame, in my opinion, the offense to me will be too much for Michigan. Michigan got one of the best linebackers in Devin Bush. Yes, they do. Their D line will be will be sound. But I, I, just, I just think Notre Dame's going to wear them down. And they will get this win. I got number 12, Notre Dame, defeating Michigan. Louisville, Alabama, Orlando, Florida, Camping World Stadium. Roll Tide. Done. Roll Tide. I mean, what can I say? Great defense. It don't matter who your starting quarterback is. You got a great receiving core. Damian Harris is back at running back. I, I mean, I, um, what can I say? Lamar Jackson's going for Louisville. And I, I know Petrino said they're going to beat Alabama, and he guarantees it. <sighs> Sorry, buddy. This is roll tide all the way. Roll tide. Oh, Avocare Classic. Dallas, Texas. AT&T Stadium. Turnover chain, turnover chain, turnover chain. The number eight Miami Hurricanes against the number 25 LSU Tigers. And questions on, on for both teams. Number one for LSU. Quarterback. Who is it? Joe Burrow? Miles Brennan. Who's, who's your quarterback? My opinion, the better two quarterbacks just transferred from your school since they weren't given a chance to even play over there. Yes, Narcisse came out and said that they wanted to do just Wildcat with him. That boy's an athlete. You just don't run no Wildcat with Loyal Narcisse. He's an athlete. Okay? You you let him do his thing. You let him throw, he can scrim out the pocket. He's gone. McMillan's gone. Who's the running back? There's no big time running back at LSU for the first time in years. I mean, we had Fournette. You had Geis. I'm going to Joe Adai. Oh, man. I, I mean, just to name some running backs, you know, that were at LSU. We don't, LSU don't have a big time running back at all this year. Wide receivers. They had DJ Chalk last year. He's gone. I mean, and then you have some questions on the offensive line. Line. This is, you know, a first LSU. I mean, I mean, you get the talent, but you're not getting talent like you used to. There's talent leaving this state of Louisiana. This state, yes, the state I live in. There's talent leaving this state to go to Alabama, to go to Georgia. The talent's not staying in the state. And until you, they show better, start winning more games, then we might get the talent back. And then they still can't get that big-time quarterback to come to LSU. So that's the question over there. And to stay over there, defense, you got Kristen Fulton back. Okay, he came back after being suspended indefinitely. All right. You have Del Pitt and Battle back at safety. You got Greedy Williams, unanimous, you know, first-team All-American preseason. Okay. And then you got Devin White and linebacker. Okay. David Randa, one of the best defensive coordinators in the nation. He's going, have, he's, going have, he's going to have a great defense. Plain and simple. He's going to get the best out of everybody in that defense. No matter about the six returning starters that you have. Okay? He's going to have the best players on his defensive side of the field playing. And he will get the best out of them. Okay? David Randa, in my opinion, one of the best defensive coordinators there is. Let's go to the other side of the ball. Excuse me, the other side of the field. Come and talk about both offense and defense from Miami. Tell you what, Miami bring back a lot on a lot on defense. Turnover chain, turnover chain, turnover chain. 
<laughs> I thought that was so unique and excellent just to see them get a turnover, go to the sideline, got the chain. But you best believe you're going to see it in Dallas, Texas. I guarantee you that. Tournament chain will come out with Miami. Um, Miami, you know, won a lot of games due to turnovers. And games they didn't get a lot of turnovers in, they struggled. Clemson, Wisconsin, you know, games like that, they lost. They lost. So, that's one thing. Will they get turnovers against LSU? I say they will get turnovers against LSU. Number two, you know, is will, will Malik Rozier be better than last year? I say yes. And I say that's a major key in this game also, okay, because Malik Rozier has more experience than any LSU quarterback on the other side of the field. Put them all together. He got more experience. And I think with a close ball game late, that, it will, that will be your difference maker, Malik Rozier. And that will give the Miami Hurricanes a big victory in Dallas over number 25 ranked LSU. Okay, Miami's going to do it. I'm sorry. Yes, LSU is in my state. But I'm going to always keep it real. Miami going to Dallas. They beat LSU. And they're going to ride that wave pretty much all the way to the ACC championship game. And then Labor Day, Monday night. Virginia Tech. Florida State. And Coach Taggart. I like Coach Taggart. I really do. And I think he will have Florida State still up and running. Jimbo did a great job. Had a lot of injuries on his team last year. You know, Francois got hurt in the first game. Francois is back. He's battling, um, um, I think his name Blackman for the um, starting job. They're battling for it. I think Francois is going to win that job. VTech come back. Justin Fentz has done a great job with that team. But when it's all said and done in a close game, oh, 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 oh. State will get a hard fought victory. That's all I have for today, everybody. I'll be back for week two. All right. Big game week two. I'm looking at is Georgia and South Carolina. I'll get into all that next week. Other than that, see y'all next week, people. Peace.